Hey, what's up YouTube? So today I have a whole pile of um, mnemonics for um, signaling molecules within the GI system. And all in all, I'm pretty proud of these mnemonics. I think they work pretty well. I only, I made them while I was studying these hormones and I haven't really forgotten any of the functions um, since. So let's see if they'll work for you too. Um, so first we're gonna start with CCK. So CCK is cholecystokinin and it, effect, it effectively, of course, causes the gallbladder to contract and um, the sphincter of OD simultaneously to relax and having the, gall, the um, bile secreted into the intestinal lumen. So that's implied in the name cholecystokinin, the cyst and being the gallbladder and the kinin being the motion of the bile into the lumen. However, there's some other functions of cholecystokinin, and those are a little harder to remember because they're not built into the name, which is why I made the mnemonic. Now, one thing to notice is that this, here, here's the um, intestinal lumen. I've just drawn a K over this. Um, and basically what this is, um, this mnemonic showing is that the cholecystokinin has functions in all directions um, relative to this um, sphincter of OD site and the insertion of these um, these ducts. So of course this is the um, bile duct, the common bile duct, and this is the pancreatic duct. And here's the sphincter of OD right here. So the letter K of CCK can remind you of all these functions. So we already said contracts the bile, relax OD. So the o if, if this is uh, in the analogy, if this is the bile duct, then this is the, the sphincter of OD. So this can remind you that there's relaxation of the OD. And then over here, this would be, this leg of the K would be, um, this would be uh, the pancreatic duct. And so that's gonna remind you that cholecystokinin is calling forth those enzymes from the pancreas. Um, so the, the leg representing the, the duct can remind you of that and also causing growth of the exocrine pancreas. And it also um, potentiates secretin, which we're going to look at in a second. So basically, all in all, um, it's it's calling out to the pancreas to do its do its exocrine job. Um, so grow, release, and secrete, right? So this 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 part of the K is going to now remind us of two the two last functions, or basically the last function. So if this is the lumen area in the analogy here we have then this up towards this region we have the stomach so this is going to remind you of the stomach and the effects of cck is going to be to inhibit gastric emptying and i think that's logical with respect to the fact that cholecystokinin is releasing the, the bile um, it's just kind of going to um, put a metered control on that bile release so we can do some effective digestion which is the last function i essentially put down the bottom of this leg which is one you could maybe forget, but it kind of ties this whole thing together. Now, the last thing I wanted to mention is CCK. So this other little mnemonic is ICC, which is gonna be basically reminding you that I cells see, that is to say they, they, they detect amino acids and lipids in the duodenal um, space and they effectively secrete CCK, they release CCK into the bloodstream where it can have its effects, right? So CC is gonna, the two C's of CC are gonna remind you of two biomolecules that it's seeing. And you can, you, you know it's amino acids and lipids because um, GIP is the one that sees glucose. So it's, be, it's best to remember that by difference. And we're gonna look at GIP here in a second. So this is gonna be evident and you're gonna have a hard time forgetting that. All right, so yeah, that's CCK. Just remember the K is gonna remind you of all this structure, the ducts meeting at the sphincter of OD, and all those branches should basically come forth in your memory. Now secretin is, um, is released from S cells, so that's um, logical, secretin from S cells, and that's upon recognition of acids that is um, fatty acids and just plain protons inside the, um, the intestinal lumen. So in your mind, you might just tell yourself, oh, it's acids, but it's, it's both protons and fatty acids. So that makes it a little easier to remember, right? 
Um, what does secretin do? Well, it secretes, but what does it secrete? There's a lot of things you could secrete, and so the name doesn't tell you quite enough. So I have this additional mnemonic. It secretes such that protons become a secret. Secretin makes protons a secret. And it does that, of course, with the only thing that can that really titrates um, protons effectively in the body, um, in the intestinal system, at least, is bicarb. Um, so bicarb secretion from the uh, ductal cells so and, and from um, all sources. So that's also from the pancreas. So it's a full-on bicarb storm in order to make these protons a secret. Secretin makes protons a secret. And then it also inhibits um, the proton release from parietal cells. So in that sense, it also shushes that message, that proton message that it's receiving. So it just it doesn't want to hear anything about protons. These S cells just want to make these protons a secret. So they effectively take care of that. GIP, so gastrin inhibitory peptide, is an interesting, interesting um, little um, peptide. So it's secreted from the du du uh, duodenum and jejunum. And it's um, basically upon seeing the three major biomolecules. I mentioned before, GIP recognizes glucose and then it, it recognizes amino acids. In this case, I had to write amino acids and the only amino acid is actually proline, um, but this amino um, in, the in the mnemonic can remind you, of course, it's not just proline, it's all of the amino acids. So glucose, amino acids, that it, or well, I guess all of the amino acids, and then fats, pH fats. <laughs> Yeah, so um, upon seeing these bi biomolecules, GIP causes um, gastrin inhibition. And how does it? How does it? What else does it do? Well, it also has this glucose um, and insulin releasing function of um, from the pancreas. So one thing you can remember is glucose causes insulin releasing from the pancreas. GIP. Um, and basically what happens is GIP goes to these um, beta, beta cells in the pancreas and potentiates the release of um, the insulin from those beta, beta cells. So um, this also is a good, le a good place to note that oral glucose for this reason, because of GIP, is um, better at releasing insulin because I know in your mind you probably have it engraved that glucose causes insulin release. And yes, that's true, but glucose with GIP causes effective or more effective insulin re uh, release than just glucose alone. Um, but it's funny because glucose again here is causing the GIP message, as you can see, because glucose um, causes the release um, of GIP. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's GIP. So what have we covered so far? We've covered CCK, we've covered secretin, and we've covered GIP. So glucose causes insulin release from the pancreas, GIP, gastrin inhibitory peptide. And I, I didn't quite point this out um, firmly enough, but gastrin inhibitory peptide obviously inhibits um, the function or release of gastrin. So that would be the other function beyond just the glucose causing release for the pancreas function. All right, so now let's move on to VIP and my thing's going away because it doesn't, I don't know what's going on with that, but here it is back. Um, VIP, so there's three little um, mnemonics that I, I've come up with here. So this is um, vasointestinal peptide um, VIP. So if you can just remember that VIP and, VIP and drip, so diarrhea or pancreatic cholera is um, caused by a VIPoma. Um, so what does that imply? That implies that VIP, VIP causes um, more water to, to be in the lumen of the intestinal system, right? Um, VIP is also important um, for dilation of the, the lower esophageal um, uh, sphincter in order for the, the bolus descending through the esophagus to be able to be accepted into the stomach. 
and in the same way a viper accepts its meal by extending and opening its mouth um, just of course remember that's a relaxing of the sphincter um, to receive the bolus and furthermore VIP is homologous to secretin and so it has the same functions as secretin um, do you remember what those were oh yeah secretin wants protons to be a secret right so what does it do? It releases bicarb and it causes a block upon um, the, the, um, the release of protons in the stomach, right? So we have a secretin function. We have a um, dilation of or a relaxation of the lower esophageal finger and a dip and drip. So increasing the, the luminal water, right? In Keflin, um, so in Keflin is a little more minor, just real quickly, you can remember that it, it causes encasement in Keflin, causes encasement of the GI tract, that is, it contracts the smooth muscle and it um, shuts off the secretion. Um, and you can remember this a little easier if you, just if you already know that opiates are used for treating diarrhea. So how would you treat diarrhea? Well, you would close contract the smooth muscles and so that um, the bolus is effectively mas massaged and the water is more effectively absorbed and furthermore you would stop the secretion so in keflin in cases <clears throat> excuse me the uh, gi tract by constriction is shutting off those valves the secretory valves one last little thing i never really thought about for whatever reason maybe this was already obvious to all of you guys but i noticed that we have two sets of basic enzymes being released in this digestive system the first set is in the mouth and the stomach and the second set is in the pancreas so as as a set though they of course cover all the the basic um metabolic um biomolecules um so amylase and lipase from the mouth, protease from the stomach, amylase, lipase, and protease from the pancreas. All right, cool. I think that's the last little um, GI mnemonic. I covered basically what I think are the hardest concepts to remember. Those, those, those hormones don't really tell much about themselves. So I hope you found that useful and cheers. Have a good day, guys.